Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be practicing working with square roots without the aid of a calculator. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, this is an absolute must know skill. So go ahead and put that calculator away and see if you can figure this out. Matter of fact, if you know how to do this prompt, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second, then I'm gonna walk through the solution here step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the square root of 2000 without the aid of a calculator, what is the answer? Well, let's go and take a look at it right now. So what I'm looking for is this answer right here, 20 times the square root of five. Now, of course, you could get an approximation of this by taking the square root of five on your calculator and multiplying it by 20. So if you uh, came up with this answer, 44.2, uh, 44.721, of course, this is an approximation as I am uh, rounding off. This is what you would get if you used a calculator, okay? So it's important, obviously, to know how to use your calculator, but it's critical that you know how to work with square roots and radicals and algebra, and really that's kind of the main point of this video is to practice some of these very important properties, and uh, this is a kind of pretty standard problem. So hopefully, you got this right, and if that is the case, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus A 100% and multiple stars so you can share with your friends and family that indeed you are an expert when it comes to simplifying square roots and radicals. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem right now. So here it is, the square root of 2000. So what do we need to figure this out? Well, what we're going to need is, uh, we're gonna have to have, actually, a understanding, an understanding of a property of square roots. Now there's different properties of square roots and radicals. In mathematics, this little symbol right here, of course, is a square root symbol, but it's kind of more broadly known as a radical, right? That's kind of more the technically correct uh, name. So here, this is the square roots. If I wanted to know the square root of nine, I would write that. But if I wanted to know the cube root of a number, I would need a little three up there. So it would be the cube root of eight. And we get into things called uh, the radicands and index and whatnot. That's for another video. But this symbol here is referred to as a radical. So if you're studying uh, mathematics in an algebra course, and you're like, hey, where do I need to go in my textbook or what unit or chapter should I be looking at to kind of reference what I'm talking about, you would want to look at uh, radical expressions, radical equations, that type of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this particular property. So the property that we need to understand to figure this problem out is that the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So really what this is saying is, if we can uh, look at a number, okay, or a value, look at the factors of it, so here would be a product, a times b, we could separate these, um, and this course is underneath one big square root, we can actually separate these into two little square roots just like this. This is a very powerful property of square roots and radicals, and this is what we're going to need uh, in order to do this prompt. But there's another part of this problem that you're gonna to have to understand before we can put this all together, and that is something called perfect squares. So we're gonna to want to factor, okay, we're gonna to wanna to factor 2,000, and you can factor 2,000 into all sorts of factors, but what type of factors, right? Well, we got two times 1,000, that would be a uh, factor, or uh, factors of 2,000s, but we wanna be looking for very specific type of factors called perfect squared factors. So these are some perfect square factors, four, nine, 16, 25, 36. So these are the type of factors that we wanna be thinking about when it comes to uh, this particular value. Now, why is, uh, or why are these numbers so important? Because each one of these perfect square factors, we can take the square root of, right? So the square root of four is two. And I don't need a calculator, and I'm not getting an, uh, an irrational number or a decimal approximation. 
uh, when I take the square root of these numbers, so the square root of 9, of course, is 3, square root of 16 is 4, and so forth. So we're on the lookout for these factors here, 4, 9, 4, 9 16, 25, and this because this goes on and on and on. So uh, between this property right here and having an understanding of perfect square factors, we can go ahead and put this all together. All right, now there's a couple different ways uh, that you can take in order to do this problem, all right? So in other words, uh, we're kind of looking at 2,000, or right? you're saying to yourself, okay, 2,000, I need to break up 2,000 into some factors. What factors? Well, there's all sorts of different type of factors for 2,000. One would be two times 1,000, but two and 1,000, both of these here are not perfect square factors, right? So you're kind of just searching things around and you're thinking, well, what factor uh, could I use? Uh, and some of you might be saying, well, you know what? I can use 100 times 20. Now you could have other factors, but let's suppose you came up with these factors. Now, uh, you could have gotten this prom totally correct, but had different factors. That's perfectly fine. So let's suppose someone's looking at the uh, 2000, like, you know what? I know 100 times 20 is 2000 and 100 is a perfect square factor because I can definitely take the square root of 100, right? You're thinking of numbers here that when you take the square root of, you have a nice, lovely whole number, like the square root of 100 or 100, the square root of 100 is 10. So if you're thinking in those terms, that is excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna break up 2000 as 100 times 20. Again, you can break this up into other factors as long as one of these factors is a perfect square factor. That's what you're looking for. All right, so let's go to continue now. So we have the square root of 100 times 20. That's the same thing as the square root of 2000. So the square root of 100 times 20 here uh, is where we're going to use this property of square roots. We're going to break up each of these fat. We're going to put each of these factors under its own individual square root. So this is the, uh, the square root of 100 times 20 is equal to the square root of 100 times the square root of 20. Okay, so this is very powerful because now we can take the square root of 100. Okay, the square root of 100, of course, is 10. So here... This leads with, with uh, 10 times the square root of 20. Now, if some of you got this um, answer, you were like, yeah, I did this right. I got 10 times the square root of 20 or something like this, uh, and you didn't get the final right answer, what you probably did was kind of quit too soon. Because what can happen, and this is pretty uh, common, is maybe you didn't choose the biggest perfect square factor uh, when you kind of started uh, simplifying this problem. No big deal. So what you want to do is take a look at this number, okay, whatever it might be underneath your square root, and ask yourself, is there any more perfect square factors under, you know, in this number right here? So with 20, you might be saying to yourself, wait, wait a minute, uh, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, and 4 is a perfect square factor. So you're going to have to kind of continue to simplify. So don't stop you know, once you've kind of uh, simplified with just using one perfect square factor, make sure your final, you know, uh, square root has no more perfect squares in it. So 20, we can write as the uh, square root of 20, we can write as a square root of four times five. And now we're going to go ahead and continue on the same way. So this would be uh, equal to 10 times the square root of four. Again, we're using these properties here, the property of square roots, uh, the square root of four times the square root of five. And of course, the square root of 4 is 2. So now I have 10 times 2, which of course is 20 times the square root of 5. And of course, if you wanted to know that actual value, just take the square root of 5, multiply by 20, and we get approximately 44.721. Okay, so hopefully this was a uh, pretty basic problem for most of you out there. Now, if you need help with uh, working with square roots and radicals, and of course, this is a critical uh, skill for those of you that are learning algebra and any sort of math course. Let me give you a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional YouTube videos on my channel on this uh, matter and many uh, other math topics as well. But uh, I would probably strongly suggest checking out like my Algebra 1 course if you really want to get my best full instruction on square roots and radicals. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.